Okay. All right, back for my fourth attempt. And a uh, bunch of people asked me what happened on your last attempt. And the recording, the video recording, goes out to day 37. But my charting actually goes out to day 60. And on the 60th day, my speaker system broke and it no longer worked to, to sound the alarm. I tried using a headset. Actually, it broke on the day 59. <laughs> but anyway, I tried using a headset for a while. It doesn't work. You just pull the headset off and it doesn't work. So then I, about the middle of the day 60, I quit. And I did learn a valuable lesson. And that is that all of polyphasic sleep success there revolves around being able to stand up for at least two phases in a row. Okay, you got a sleep phase in between, right? But two phases in a row, guaranteed, you're going to have to stand. Uh, otherwise, engage in it, you know, on your feet. You cannot sit. And my problem on the first three attempts is that I, my normal posture is seated on the floor with the CPU. And if I wanted to stand, I would have to move my keyboard, the monitor, and the mouse to a table. Okay, which, when I did that, I was successful. Okay, and I was, I was able to beat one phase. Okay, and I did that on two or three occasions. I was successful in standing up and defeating the heavy, heavy-duty, uh, you know, elite <laughs> sleep deprivation. I was able to do that uh, on a single phase. But when it came to doing it again in the next phase, I didn't want to because of the pain. Um, there's basically pain in your back, pain in your legs, just general inconvenience. It feels like it feels inconvenient to be standing, okay? Now, there are people that work standing their whole shifts, like Aya. She said she worked retail and was able to stand 12 hours, 8, 12 hours a day. And... So if she can do it, she said I can do it. <laughs> so, and the fact is, you know, I get to I get to take a break as well. So I need to get used to standing, basically. Um, and now I have a setup where I have a desk. My computer is on that. The default position of my computer is on that desk. Okay, and you know. I have a chair, an actual chair. I don't sit on the floor. <clears throat> and so if I need to stand, it's as simple as just moving the chair. That's all I have to do. It's no hassle at all. So now my attempt here is going to be centered around standing up for at least seven hours in a row with a sleep phase in between, 30 minutes of sleep in between. And I need to be prepared to do that much at least. To, to adapt. Otherwise, I won't. It's just that simple. I just simply will not adapt. I will fail. Guaranteed. Because a seated posture will never succeed with polyphasic sleeping. You won't. You just won't. You, you can get a level of success. I got all the way to the last level. I mean, my body was fully adjusted uh, you know, to the sleep schedule. I had REM sleep regularly, you know, pre-lucid dreams, flying dreams, um, you know, polyphasic euphoria had it all there, okay? But that final stage where sleep deprivation fights to choose sleep outside of the schedule uh, cannot be defeated in a seated posture. Just can't. So I have to, I have to learn to love standing. And and towards that end, I've researched links about how to stand all day long and, and, and tips for improving, uh, you know, conditions uh, in, you know, with continuous standing. So, like, one chiropractor recommends lifting one leg four to six inches uh, and putting it on some sort of support for a period of time. Um, all, just about everybody seems to recommend changing your posture and learning to do that. Okay. Um, and then other... You know, there's a whole host of exercises that you can do to help uh, um, alleviate pain by, you know, doing certain stretches and such like that. And so I've 
bookmarked all of these various links. And, uh, you know, it's all about taking a positive attitude about standing and making it normal. Make standing normal. And, you know, I'm just going to have to do it as long as it takes to break, to, to break. It's like a horse. You know, you got to break a horse, a wild horse. That's what it is. So, um, I finished day one, my first uh, 24 hours. And the first three phases had some knot-offs and stuff, you know, whatever, just breaking things in. And then in the fourth phase, I felt normal, like a regular, as if I had a regular eight hours sleep. And uh, I most certainly did not. <laughs> um, and uh, But I felt like it. And so that's my first uh, success there, or a, a bit of adjustment. In the fourth phase, I felt uh, normal. And I was able to pursue normal activities for the day without any uh, problem. Those first three phases, though, were were just basically super tough, you know, like major sleep deprivation. Because uh, when I started it, my when I first started, I stayed up seven hours beyond my, you know, quote-unquote normal bedtime. Stayed up seven hours before beginning. And that uh, that kicked in some deprivation. Uh, did three naps on that fourth nap there was some adjusting that was done mental adjusting and uh, felt great the 7 p.m. that that fifth phase uh, no problems the 11 p.m. had no problems the this is the final phase but when I went to sleep I had a no sleep so I think that's par for the course in the beginning and now I'm on day two and I will keep you updated on how things go so talk to you then.